Monopoly is not a game of chance. It is symbolic of capitalism. There are certain sides on the board which are meant to make you earn taxes. Other sides, even if you have properties on them, even if you have a monopoly there, you will end up paying a lot of rents and eventually go bankrupt. All new modern games, be it Catan, be it Ticket to Ride, all of them are designed to teach you capitalism. You might actually observe while playing any of these games that there is someone in your family who wins more often. That person may actually become a very successful investor or trader. In this video, I'll talk about a lot of monopolies across a large variety of categories. If you don't have time to go through each category, then use the description below. Pick the category you are interested in and just directly jump to that section. I would, however, recommend you to go through all categories, maybe not necessarily in one sitting. You might actually end up identifying some new stocks which will make immense money for you in future. First one is automobiles and auto parts, 102 listed companies, four notable monopolies, Maruti, Tata Motors, Bajaj Auto, m, &M. All four have different business models. Maruti is mostly into passenger cars. Tata Motors passenger cars specializing into EV these days. Also trucks and buses. Bajaj Auto is mostly two-wheelers and three-wheelers. Mahindra and Mahindra SUVs plus farm equipment like tractors. Quick inputs on the other columns that you see in the table. Market cap is obvious. If P-E ratio is high, market is expecting you to deliver a high growth in sales and profit. Beta is a measure of how volatile the stock is. If the market goes up, for example, 1% and the beta is 1.8, like in the case of Tata Motors, then Tata Motors will go up 1.8%. High beta stocks are great in bull runs. Trends show that markets in any case go up 70 to 80% time. Distance to 52 week high. If the number is very small, that means the stock is very close to the 52 week high, after which technically there is no resistance and stock can go up to any level technically from trading perspective. If the stock is significantly away from 52 week low, that means probably the bad news is behind it now. But in a bull run, if stock is still close to the 52 week low, stay away. For this particular category, I've added a table towards end. F is dependency upon foreign markets. All of these four stocks export their vehicles. So yes, D is debt. Maruti and Bajaj do not have debt. Other two companies have significant debt. Sales growth is there with all of them. Profit growth mostly is there with Maruti. All other three companies are not showing increased profit at the rate at which they are showing increased sale. That is why it is N. The meter shows Maruti Suzuki as the most investable company as of now. Tata Motors and Mahindra are on the lowest out of these four. Actual decisions require a lot more complex formulas and a lot more columns to take a decision. Yes. Banking services, it had 113 listed companies. The biggest monopoly of course is HDFC, especially after the merger with HDFC Limited. 50% higher than ICICI, which is the next bank in the line. SBI is the largest public sector bank, number three. Bajaj Finance, number four. Bajaj Finance has a totally different model here. Though it is number four, I would call it out as a separate monopoly because it is into financing at shop level on the merchandise you buy. For example, if you're buying a television, you'll see a counter offering you a 0% loan from Bajaj Finance. In fact, you might pay less if you take a 0% loan from Bajaj Finance. That's the business model. The beta of all top four is higher than one. Bajaj Finance is close to two. In bull runs, Bajaj Finance is a great stock to have. ICICI and State Bank are both close to their 52 week high, which is good news if you are invested into them. They might break into a totally new bull run very soon. Again, I have a meter on the right. Profit from finances, which is the key business. HDFC and Bajaj Finance both are showing considerable profit from their key operations. Other income, everyone has. Sales growth, everyone has. Profit, everyone has. Most investable, HDFC Bank and Bajaj Finance. Geo Financial Services is the dark horse to watch for in five years from now. They will leverage the customer base Reliance has via the Geo platforms. Watch out for this becoming a monopoly in the next five years. The next category is Aerospace and Defense. If you see the heat map, HAL is nearly 50% of it. It is the largest monopoly. However, HAL is mostly into aeronautics. Mazagan Docks is mostly into ships. So both of them don't have any competition with each other. BEL supplies equipment to both of them and many, many other companies also. All these three companies can be called monopolies in their own zones, though there is a huge difference in their market caps. Beta of HAL and Mazagan Docks has off late shot up a lot. Now they go up more than the index when market is under a bull run. HAL and BEL are both close to 52 week high. 
Mazagan Docs is not very far off. All these stocks are far off from their 52 week low, which means they were not doing great earlier, but all of them are doing pretty well right now. Next, we'll talk about beverages, both hard and soft drinks. Varun Beverages is the clear monopoly here, a market cap of nearly 2 lakh crore, totally riding the wave of Pepsi's growth in India, being the bottling partner for Pepsi. Now they are also getting into other countries and becoming a partner of Pepsi in those areas, taking contract manufacturing from Pepsi. The other two brands, United Spirits and United Breweries, have been there for ages. Same with Radiko Khetan, all three are liquor brands. Varun Beverages beta is high based upon the high growth it is showing. All other three brands are kind of low. There are a lot of startups also in this space. For example, brands like Bira, Indri, a lot of them are getting created and they're creating waves in the liquor industry in India and the world. Most of the monopolies here are again close to 52 week high and significantly away from 52 week lows. Varun Beverages is nearly 50% of the heat map. So clearly a monopoly. Chemicals. This is a big category. There is a huge consumption of chemicals in industry and at homes. Asian Paints has been the monopoly here for decades perhaps. 2,76,000 crores of market cap. Pidilite which is the manufacturer of Fevicol and many other such products is the number 2. SRF is the manufacturer of the refrigerant gases, the biggest one. Supreme Industries is the largest manufacturer of films and also a significant manufacturer of plastic furniture. So though it is small in size, it is still a monopoly in its own zone. This is in general a defensive sector. If you want to invest into stocks and forget them for 8, 10, 15 years and probably grow at 10, 12, 15% kind of CAGRs, then some of the stocks here like especially Asian Paints and Pidilite are good stocks for that category. Coal, this is a very interesting category. The list shows actually only one stock, Coal India. GMDC is not coal alone it is mining and it is only there in Gujarat so its scope is very limited it can't become a large company coal India clearly has a low P ratio even today defensive beta of 0.9 slightly away from 52 week high which means a corrected a bit I own coal India primarily for dividend yield purposes one thing which is not there in the list is the coal element of Adani Enterprises Limited. Adani is the largest coal supplier in India they import significant coal from Southeast Asia from Indonesia, from Australia, and they plug the demand gap, which Coal India cannot meet. So if Adani Enterprises was to hive off their coal division, which imports and supplies coal, that will definitely enter this list, probably at number two at least. Construction and engineering, 105 companies. These companies build the country, not just the country, companies like LNT, which are the clear cut monopolies. They build the world. They are hugely global, especially in the Middle East. They have been growing like anything for decades. In fact, one big advantage they have is because of the size and experience they have, it becomes increasingly difficult for companies to give large orders to anyone else. For example, LNT does significant amount of metro projects globally these days. RVNL, no one sees it as a monopoly. However, in the railway stocks, it is, it does significant amount of construction work for railways and is a monopoly in that space. It has become big off late because the government spend in the railway space. Construction and materials, 41 companies in this list, primarily cement companies. Ultratech is the largest one. Ambuja and ACC are now owned by Adani. So if these are combined, then they will become number two. Most of these companies went through significant capacity expansion and that excess capacity never got utilized. Construction these days does not happen in concrete. It is done in steel, which has reduced the overall contribution of cement in the construction industry significantly. As a result, the P's are high. The companies are growing. They are nearly all time high, but not that big a deal as they used to be 10 years back. You can see that clearly in the beta part where all the top three, four companies have a beta of less than one, which means they move slower than the market. Food and tobacco. Tobacco, there are two main, main companies. ITC and Godfrey Phillips, rest all are food companies. All the top four companies, ITC, Nestle, Britannia and Tata, they have their own niche. ITC is primarily into cigarettes and also a bit of hotels and paper. Nestle, one of the biggest monopolies, two key products, Cerelec and Maggi. Globally, Nestle has more than 100 or 200 products, which they have not even launched in India. I'm waiting for the day when they launch maybe 10 more products in India. What will the numbers look like at that stage? One good thing about Nestle is they reinvest a significant amount of their profit back into their business rather than take it away to their parent company. Britannia, largest manufacturer of biscuits and cake kind of products. Tata Consumer is the holding company for most of the Tata stocks in the food space. Marico, Patanjali, Adani, Wilmer, they all have their own niche, but not a monopoly by size per se. But yes, they have products 
which are the industry leaders. Again, this is a defensive sector. It does not move at the same pace as the index. So if you want a stable portfolio, will not go up or down a lot, move at a decent space over time, pick up the monopolies from this particular category. Most of the stocks are away from their 52 week high, which means there has been a decent correction in all of them of late. Hotels and entertainment, I have held only one stock in the past, Lemon Tree. I also own a bit of IHC primarily to just be a member of the chain and get the benefits of it. However, that's a category I don't like. Smallest sneeze in the market, recession or any other thing like say a pandemic. This category gets destroyed for at least one or two years. Lemon Tree went to about 14, 15 levels when I bought it during pandemic. It is right now 10x of those levels. Better buy these stocks when the market is really sulking and sell them when the euphoria is the highest. Devyani International is a little different. It is the sister company. Actually, Devyani is the sister of Varun. Devyani International holds the franchises for companies like Pizza Hut, KFC, Costa Coffee and so on. I love the business. However, the stock has always been overly expensive and it is very, very volatile. I'm a little scared at these levels to invest in the company, but a good business. Sapphire Foods is in the same category as Devyani. They hold franchisee of several companies. One of the most interesting categories, investment banking and services, 70 listed companies. The reason I said interesting is this sector grows nearly in autopilot mode because new companies will list, their PEs will go up, their stock prices will go up, their turnover will go up. This sector works on commission basis. Their turnover will increase automatically. HDFC AMC is the largest. BSC ever since Zeroda bought 5% stake in BSC has been growing by leaps and bounds. Right now they have improved their services significantly, reduced their charges significantly, lot more competitive with NSC. And it is now at number two at around 40,000 crore. It has grown significantly in last one year. You can see it that distance from 52 week low is 85%. Tata Investment is like a holding company for Tata Group. Tata Sons is also a holding company. I get confused what is happening between these two companies. But this company either is up 5% or down 5%. This has been the precedent for last one or two months since I've been observing. I've held this company in the past. It is a good company. However, it moves slowly in general besides what is happening right now. All the other companies, Motilal, Oswal, Angel One, they are great companies, ICI Securities, all of them are good. All of them are competitors. All of them are doing reasonably well. Many of them are working in the HNI space. One company which is missing in this list and will be the monopoly to watch out for, which will be the number one when it lists, is NSC. Its pre-IPO valuation is 2,40,000 crores. They have already asked SEBI if they can now go for filing a DRHP. SEBI is yet to respond. Mostly after elections, it will be allowed. Next category, insurance. Banks have tie-ups with foreign companies. For example, ICIC has tie up with Prudential for life insurance and Lombard for general insurance. A really competitive space, but LIC had the head start decades earlier. It has the largest network of ULIP agents. The market cap of LIC is 6,27,000 crores. Again, a defensive sector with beta less than one, but a sector with huge potential. There is a significant amount of population that has products including their lives which are not insured yet. Oil and gas, Reliance at 20 lakh crore, the most valuable company in India but it is slightly misplaced because it also contains geo platforms, it also contains geo financials, also contains Reliance retail. There will be a time when all these things will get rejected and Reliance will not appear with such high value at the top in the oil and gas space. All other companies in the top are mostly PSUs. One big problem with this sector is whenever crude goes up the sector loves it, but windfall taxes imposed, it was done two days back also, which wipes out any chances of making money. However, the reverse does not happen. If crude corrects a lot, there is no such negative windfall tax or tax rebate given. So the sector loses money at that time. So that is why I would not invest in sector in general. Machinery, equipment and components, one of the biggest one, 168 listed companies, Siemens, ABB, Havels, BHEL, all these are heavyweights. Everyone is having a niche of their own. Siemens is the biggest one. I don't like Siemens for the simple reason that every few years they siphon off a significant amount of money from their balance sheet to their parent. Market sulk, minority shareholders complained a lot, but it is all legal, not in the interest of minority shareholders, but they have done at least two or three times. Otherwise, they would have been a lot bigger. But most of the large machinery you would see in any plant would be from Siemens or ABB or BHL. BHL is heavy into power plants. Havels, I have fond memories. My first startup in 1995, Havels was a customer. We used to supply certain parts to their meters division. Scheffler, I think, is misplaced here. 
so is ashoka leyland they are both into auto space metal and mining tata steel is probably very popular and the same weight as jsw but i consider jsw steel as more efficient tata steel has a problem with corus it is a historical problem corus has been eating away the overall profits of the group while tata steel has done a lot of restructuring of their debt and has reduced it significantly however till they can solve the uk problem they will not be as profitable as they can hindustan zinc and vedanta are owned by mr anil agarwal vedanta group they are more interested in taking the profits out as dividends to make the debt obligations of the global vedanta group which is right now into troubles steel authority of india huge mandate huge infrastructure huge number of mines but again they give so much of dividend to the government they can't grow big ever natural gas Kale has been the biggest player in this sector for decades. Adani Total Gas is the new entrant. Though their turnover is not high, their market cap is pretty high. That reflects in the P ratio of 180. I don't know from where they will increase the revenue or sales and profit to this extent. They need to go 10x with the same cost to become reasonable in market cap. Personal and household products. This is the biggest sector from consumption perspective. If India's GDP will grow, consumption will grow, this sector will grow. The beta for the top stocks is very low. So for long term stable portfolios, this may be a great sector. HUL is the largest one, 5,32,000 crores. Godrej is the next one. Colgate, largest player in India when it comes to oral hygiene. Gillette globally and India largest in the grooming space, razors, shaving creams, foams, there is no one closer to them. I would say all five or six of top of them are great companies. All of them have potential to increase significantly as India's GDP grows. All of them have a great future. Pharma is among the larger revenue generators when it comes to exports for India after IT. Sun Pharma, Cipla, DRL, Zydus, all of them are kind of in a competitive space. All of them have certain niche products of their own patented ones or licensed ones which gives them a significant revenue and margin divis i think in the world it is the largest contract manufacturer of pharma products specifically generics all other companies again torrent lupin they have certain monopolies in terms of products however they can't probably become as big as sun pharma while pharma is a defensive sector sun pharma within this also has high beta it has a high PE. TV's lab has the highest PE of course at 72. One reason is it has corrected recently a lot. It is waiting for the next leg up. All these companies went through the roof during pandemic for obvious reasons. Real estate, a sector on the boil last one year, two year. Most of these firms are at all time highs. DLF has reclaimed its glory. DLF is now at 2,25,000 crores. All the other companies, Macrotech, Godrej, Oberai, Prestige, Brigade, Soba. All of them deal in high-end properties, high-end apartments. Margins are high, growth is high. Right now, this sector is having the best run-up of its lifetime. Betas are high, more than one for most stocks. One thing you might want to note here is distance to 52-week low is more than 50% for more stocks, which means all of them have run up a lot. Retail diversified, very interesting segment. Trent, Tata Company. I recently bought some products from Trent. Fantastic fabric, fantastic value for money. FSN is Nika. I really have no idea what the P ratio of 1500 plus is about. Future Enterprises was at the top perhaps before the pandemic. It is close to zero in value now. Software and IT services, 137 listed companies. TCS is the monopoly, but I have taken money out of TCS as well as Infosys. I don't think, I don't think anyone wants 2000, 3000, 5000 people kind of ODCs any longer in the ages of cloud and AI and now generative AI. Everyone wants niche players. Everyone wants strong team members. These team members, the top four companies are not able to hire or retain. Even if they hire good people and they train them, these will easily jump to other companies for 2x, 3x salaries. So it's a difficult time for the big companies. One more problem with all these four companies at the top is they are not able to judicially use the cash flow they have as well as the reserves they have. TCS, I believe, has more than a lakh crore rupees with them. What are they doing with it? I would want them to buy a company using that cash. They can buy persistent for cash and still have 33% of the cash left with them. Yes, companies are expensive in the market if you go out and buy them. But buddy, you are also expensive. You also are enjoying high P's. I don't know why Zomato is listed in this sector. Telecommunications, Bharti is the only company listed here. Geo platform is a part of Reliance. Its worth is about 5 lakh crores approximately. So technically you can count Geo 
while it is not a separately listed company in this list also. Indus Tower was a JV between the major players like Airtel, Vodafone and so on till, the, till a point back. Vodafone had to sell significant part of their stake in Indus Tower because they wanted money. Indus Tower is right now the second biggest company there in the tar business across the country and that is used in shared manner across all three major players. Bharti has a problem, their Dish TV business is going down significantly. Most people today are preferring IPTVs where they use internet. So that is an LOB which will reduce significantly in Bharti's portfolio and ARPU over the coming years. Geo platform is in direct conflict with Airtel in most LOBs. Textile and apparel, there is only two companies worth talking about, Titan and Page Industry. Titan is not watches, Titan is jewelry, which is Tanishq. Page Industries is jockey. These two companies you will always find expensive. You will always find them unaffordable. If you want to invest in them, invest at any point of time, average lower if you get an opportunity. Transport, infrastructure, Adani Ports is the only one, the monopoly. GMR is now called GMR Airports Infrastructure. They probably were never able to monetize the Delhi and Hyderabad airports. This is a clear-cut monopoly which will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Adani Ports and SEZ, airports, seaports, everything is going to Adani in the country these days. Transport passenger, Indigo is the biggest one. IRCT is the second one, no relation to each other. So both of them are different monopolies. I would never in my life invest into aviation. IRCTC, I don't think it is an efficiently run business, though it will always remain a monopoly when it comes to railways. So segment, I'll always give it a pass. This completes the list. I may have missed certain sectors or certain stocks. If there's any specific big miss, please let me know in the comments. I'll make sure I cover them either in the next quarter or maybe hold a special video for that. Monopolies have a big competitive edge, a very big unfair advantage with the sheer size of cash flow they have. Any new company, maybe a startup, can not even dream of competing with them because the monopoly can use the large size of cash flow to continuously buy businesses for inorganic growth or put in insane money into the business to scale to the levels which a startup cannot even dream of. Think of a company like Asian Paints, which has depots across the country, manufacturing and carrying millions of liters of paint every day. How will a brand new startup create this infrastructure in maybe one year, two year, five year time? It has taken Asian Paints three decades to set up this infrastructure. It is not impossible for new monopolies to get created. For example, till last year, Samsung was the largest smartphone manufacturer in the world, but Last year, Apple overtook it. It took nearly a decade, however, for Apple to achieve this fate. When it comes to stock market, a common reasoning given in favor of small caps, ultra small caps is, oh, something gave me 1000x returns, 10,000x returns. There are enough case studies and interviews on YouTube which will prove that. However, note that not everyone who invested in that company at that juncture when it was a penny stayed till the end. Not every company that we invest in will become 10,000x or 1,000x. It is very difficult on day zero to identify and say with conviction that this company will become a multi bagger However, monopolies are already proven. They have become the biggest in their sector. At times, we feel that a company which has already become very large will not become bigger. That is not true. Monopolies, in fact, will use their cash flow keep buying businesses, to keep investing in businesses, grow organically as well as inorganically, not every company has this unique advantage. Unless disrupted like Apple disrupted Samsung, it is very hard to overturn a monopoly. They will become stronger and stronger globally. Probably in a decade's time, we'll see 100 companies in the world which run the entire world. Even today, if you analyze Nifty stocks, the top five or seven are the ones which make difference to the index, not the remaining ones in the 50. That is a sheer size of the top five players. All of them are monopolies. Same in US stocks. If any of the larger stocks, for example, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Alphabet, Meta, if any of these move up or down, the index dances. That's the power of a monopoly.